fungal infections as you all know are a major cause of uh, morbidity and uh, mortality especially in critically ill patients. These days the frequency is rising more so because of the advances in uh, technology and uh, the improved patient care that we have today. Fungal infections can be just superficial infections or very severe systemic infections. Now the systemic infections are really severe when they occur they are very rapidly progressive and uh, more often difficult to diagnose and refractory to therapy. The bottom line is one half or more than one half of fungal infections are caused by candida species which is a normal flora in uh, the human body. Now if you look at the mortality of the various fungal infections in uh, febrile neutropenia, if you look at the various fungi, the aspergillus and candida account for more than 35 percent of uh, mortality as compared to bacterial infections like gram negative sepsis or gram positive sepsis or other causes of infections like pneumonias. This study was done on more than 55,000 episodes of febrile neutropenia. Now you know the fungal infections are, in, are increasing, the incidence is on the rise but most often it is not thought of in the differential diagnosis. Sensitive tests for early diagnosis are not available in majority of the labs or even if they are available, they are not done early enough. Even if you diagnose the fungi, the antifungal susceptibility testing is not routinely done in many of the laboratories. Now these are some of the difficulties that we face with fungal infections. Apart from diagnostic difficulties, there are certain therapeutic hurdles in fungal infections. The mainstay drugs are very few, you just have a handful of them and majority of the fungi are at least some of the fungi are intrinsically resistant to the frontline drugs like the azoles, the fluconazole and the other azoles. Difficulty in demonstration of cure is probably more difficult in fungal infections than in bacterial infections. And some of the infections actually require aggressive debridement and downgrading of immunosuppression to get what is known as the cure from infections. Now the high risk patients are like, you know, I always say they are like living culture media, you know, the fungi grow like anything in them. Now we all recognize people who are having multiple risk factors are the people who are prone to fungal infections, people with grass immunosuppressions people who are having long term cancer chemotherapy or radiotherapy, people who have undergone transplantations, the HIV infected people, people who are undergoing complicated surgical procedures and who have multiple implanted devices on them and of course not but not the least are uh, the people who are on broad spectrum antibiotics especially in the ICU. Now this was uh, from the PubMed. 1964 to 2004 but the situation hasn't really changed even now even after about 20 years or 16 years it's not changed. Now if you look at the spectrum of fungal infections in India bronchopulmonary infections or bronchopulmonary disorders form the bulk of fungal infections followed by fungal infections in uh, people with acute leukemia, neonatal sepsis, the other malignancies like hematological malignancies, the neonate the chronic people who have asthma, who are on steroids, chronic chest infections, people who have had transplants, especially renal transplant, a lot of fungal infections have been reported in renal transplant in, in renal transplant recipients and of course people who are on CAPD and bone marrow transplant recipients. So these are the spectrum of infections that have been reported from India a little while ago but it has not changed even now. 